today's Project Diaries, I will teach you about plant nutrition and where you can get protein, iron, calcium, B12 and many more using a whole food plant based diet. Hi and welcome to Project Diaries. Today's video I want to do something slightly different. Now with so many health scares over the years with swine flu, mad cow disease, bird flu, salmonella poisoning and now COVID-19, more and more people are choosing to reduce their meat consumption within their diet. And now with the UK government voting to lower UK food standards and maybe potentially adopting the more American system with growth hormones within our livestock and chlorinated chicken. Today I want to teach you the nutrition value of the plants that I've been teaching you to grow over the years. So I'm going to go around five to six different supermarkets to show you the different things that you can buy and really try and eliminate those myths that people can't live on a whole food plant-based diet through any age and walks of life. So let's get into today's video. So I'm starting off at Aldi because this was one of the first supermarkets to phase out eight of the most harmful pesticides. They're always expanding their organic food section and trying to discard a lot of artificial ingredients in their products. Now I can already feel you keyboard warriors jumping on the vegan hate train. This isn't promoting a vegan diet, but I will go into more details of why the difference between a whole food plant based diet and a vegan diet is later on in the video. So if you're new to my channel, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm trying a six week challenge of healthy eating. Over the past few years, I've had many health problems and my medication just seems to be making me worse. Now I'm not demonizing all medications, but I'm trying this six week challenge to see if it helps. Now I've personally done a lot of research into this subject but if you're trying it at home I suggest you see a healthcare professional or do your own research before changing anything in your own diet. So the question is, what am I going to be eating? I'll be avoiding saturated and trans fats from animal products and replacing them with poly and monounsaturated fats from avocados and nuts. I'll also be eating the rainbow with many fruits and vegetables, leafy greens, whole grains and whole wheat. I'll also be avoiding any oils, salt and processed sugars. So the first nutrient on today's list is protein. So, why do we need protein? Protein is a macronutrient that helps build and repair tissues. Your body uses protein to build enzymes, hormones and other body chemicals. Protein is an important building block for bones, muscle, cartilage, skin and blood. Your hair and nails are also mostly protein. You need to be eating around 0.8 grams per one kilogram of body weight per day. So instead of me listing off everything that I'm going to be eating over the next six weeks, I'm basically just going to ask those age-old questions. And the first one is, where do I get my protein from? First big one is spinach. Now you really want to get this organic. It's, it's part of the Dirty Dozen, but I will do a video on the Dirty Dozen uh, soon. So don't forget to subscribe. Muesli is a great source of protein and fiber, but make sure you check to see what the salt levels and the sugar levels are, because they can fluctuate between brands. Oats are also an amazing source of protein for your first meal of the day for breakfast. But again, check the brands because they can fluctuate in price and salt and sugar levels. There's also a huge amount of protein in nuts. So again, you want to eat sort of cashew nuts and walnuts. But if, you haven't, if you're on a budget, again, try and get them mixed. These are really good. Figs, pumpkin seeds and goji berries. Sunflower seeds are also amazing for protein, but you want to make sure that they haven't got the uh, shells on because they can cause stomach irritations and it's really hard to digest. Thin seeds are amazing for protein, fiber and magnesium. So I'm definitely getting these. So just to give you some quick examples of how much protein are in all of these nuts and seeds, all you need to do is look at the back of the packets. Now these are sunflower seeds, and as you can see here, they have 19.8 grams per 100 grams of protein. Now moving over to chia seeds. Now chia seeds are a fantastic source of omega-3s ALA. But I'll go into omega-3s later on in the video. But as you can see here, the protein is 23.9 grams per 100 grams. Now moving on to pine nuts, now these can be quite pricey but I love them in salads but as you can see they're 14 grams per 100 grams of protein. Another great source of protein are nut butters, now these can be really expensive so definitely shop around, these are a pound cheaper in little than they are in uh, Asda so I'm definitely going to stock up on these. These also don't have any sugar, salt and they have no palm oil so I'm definitely going with this brand, I love these guys so I recommend these. All of these lentils, grains and beans contain quite a lot of protein but if you're looking for a high boost you want to get these. Pinto beans are basically baked beans without all the sugar and salt and they contain nearly twice the amount of protein compared to any other bean. They're also really easy to add to so many dishes. Frozen peas are a great cheap source of protein and if you're on a budget don't be scared of getting frozen fruits and vegetables. Almost all of them are frozen on site and on the day of picking so they hold all the nutrients. Avocado is going to be a huge staple in my diet but you want to get the uh, ripen at home ones because they're a lot cheaper. 
kale, but I really want to get the washed stuff, so I'm not going to get this one here. Also, I'm going to eat a lot of bananas, but not these ones, because these are in plastic, so I'm going to look for the loose ones. Now, out of all the supermarkets I've visited today, Asda seems to be the worst when it comes to all of this pre-packed produce. Now, while I understand that delicate fruits such as raspberries and strawberries do need to have some kind of protection, bananas already come in their own natural casing. I really wish the UK government would start cracking down on these mainstream supermarkets and stop them using so many single-use plastics. I've been fortunate enough to travel the world several times, but I really feel like the UK is the worst for this problem. That's way better. Look at that bunch. I might even get two of these. So I'm going to eat lots of nuts and snacks and in with my meals. And it does say on the packet they're really high in fibre, but if you look on the back, it actually says that they've got so much more protein in them. Legumes and beans are an amazing source of protein, but check these packets. Even though it does say that it has something on the front, they can also contain loads of soybeans. Thankfully, this brand has changed. Now, I don't recommend you eat a lot of these processed mock meats. Some of them aren't healthy at all. A lot of these are highly processed and have unrecognizable ingredients. And I'm definitely not a big fan of the Impossible or Beyond Burgers, and they're really expensive. But some supermarket home brands have some really good recognizable ingredients in them, and they're quite tasty. My rule is, if you can't grow it, don't eat it. Also, if you need a huge intake of protein, this is really incredible. I know it's really expensive, but this is a massive protein boost. As you can see on the back of the label, it's got 66 grams per 100 grams of protein. It also contains iron, calcium, and B12, which I'm moving on to next. Now, B12 is the one that everybody seems to be the most confused about, so why do we need it? B12 is a micronutrient that helps keep your body nerve and blood cells healthy. It also helps to make your DNA. Now I'm currently anemic due to a lot of blood loss and B12 can really help that. Having low B12 can also make people really tired and weak. So how much do we need? It's actually a really small amount and you need between 1.4 micrograms to 2.8 micrograms per day. Also people are really worried about vitamin B12 but you can get this in so many different things such as cereals but don't be worried about getting the cheap ones. These have got less salt, less fat, uh, and less sugar in them and they've also got more iron and loads more whole grains so definitely look out for the cheaper ones there's almost two pound difference between this one and this one so just get the cheaper ones now there's so many dairy free yogurts and produce on the market at the moment so I'm going to start eating lots more of this this has definitely got a lot of vitamin uh, D and vitamin B12 in it as you can see there's absolutely no dairy no gluten no soy uh, no it doesn't contain any animal products it's free from animal fats it's free from GMO which is amazing and it's also suitable for vegans and vegetarians another massive boost for B12 is nutritional yeast it's also amazing as a cheese replacement this is also packed full of B12 has no GMO and really good for mac and cheese and lasagnas now you really want to stay away from bars like this even though they do promote vitamin B's etc uh, they also contain a hell of a lot of sugar especially the light ones they take out the fat and just add loads of sweetness but if you're that worried you can always get a B12 in a supplement it's quite easy now some vitamins and supplements can work out to be really expensive so I'll leave a load of links in the description box below. Now a lot of people think you can only get this one from fish, that's omega-3s, but where do you think the fish get it from? So why do we need omega-3s? Omega-3 fatty acids help your heart in several different ways. It's also really good at curbing inflammation throughout your body. At a higher dose it causes less abnormal heart rhythm, it also lowers your level of blood fats which are called triglycerides. So the level we need to consume hasn't actually been established, but it's estimated to take around 1.6 grams of the short chain fatty acids ALA and 500 milligrams of the longer chain fatty acids EPA and DHA. Now these also help protect the brain and lower depression and chances of Alzheimer's. Now if you'd like to know a little bit more about EPA and DHA, I will do a separate video, so leave me a comment below if you'd like to see that. Also, people say you can only get omega-3s from eating fish, but that's completely untrue. You can actually get it from flax seeds, loads of leafy greens and berries like raspberries, blueberries, blackberries and strawberries. And you can get a mix, so it's a lot cheaper this way. I know berries are really expensive getting them fresh, but you can save loads of money getting the frozen ones and you just eat them as you go. This will save a lot of waste and a lot of cash. Flax seeds are amazing in omega-3s, protein and fibre. Flax seeds also contain a lot of vitamin D, calcium, iron and zinc, but I will cover these later on in the video. Now instead of trying the uh, omega-3s from uh, fish oils, you can also try these. These are from algae, so you can have these and they're also not got any PCBs or dioxins, so these are a lot safer than the fish oils. The next one is iron. Now this is really important for me, especially being anemic. Iron is an important mineral that is a component of haemoglobin. 
This is the substance in your red blood cells that carry oxygen from your lungs and transport them throughout your body. Hemoglobin represents around two thirds of your body's iron. If you don't have enough iron, your body can't make enough healthy oxygen carrying red blood cells. How much do you need? Well this depends on your age and gender. Both men and women between the ages of 19 and 50 need around 8 milligrams, but some women may need up to 18 milligrams depending on their menstrual cycle. Now again, all your nuts, seeds, legumes and beans all contain iron. Sultana is also really good for iron, but if you check on the side it says it's got cottonseed oil on it, so I've got to avoid these because I'm avoiding oil, but uh, just check to see if uh, they're just dried. Also pomegranate seeds are incredible. Also cashews and walnuts are an incredible source for iron. Now to boost your absorption of iron intake, it's a really good idea to eat it with vitamin C. Vitamin C can allow your body to absorb up to 10 times more iron in one sitting. Now oranges are a great source of vitamin C, but if you have the choice, try and buy the loose to try and reduce the use of plastics. Now I was always told to eat fruit as a dessert, but it's really good to eat before a meal. This can help with digestion and absorption for iron. And did you know that bell peppers have three times the amount of vitamin C than an orange? but I always have trouble digesting the green and red ones, but the yellow ones are really tasty. And again, always try and buy the loose ones and avoid the overuse of plastics on our produce. Now I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for mentioning this one, but here's the difference between a vegan diet and a whole food plant-based diet. Veganism is defined as a way of life that attempts to exclude all forms of animal exploitation and cruelty, whether from food, clothing, or any other purpose. For those reasons, the vegan diet is devoid of all animal products, including meat, eggs, and dairy. So what's the difference? Veganism is based on ethical or environmental choices, but it's not a guarantee for healthy eating, as many junk foods are still vegan. A whole food plant-based diet, on the other hand, is trying to eat foods as close to their natural source. Now the reason why I'm not calling this a regular vegan diet is because these are vegan. This is vegan. Even these bacon crisps are vegan also vegan but definitely not a whole food so I'm not going to eat these. There's also a now rising number of vegan comfort foods like ice creams, ice lollies and chocolate. French fries and coca-cola are all vegan but they're not healthy at all. So moving away from all of that the next healthy one is calcium. Calcium is a vital mineral. It's also necessary to maintain healthy communications between your brain and other body parts. Calcium enables our blood to clot if we cut ourselves. It helps our muscles to contract and most of all, helps our heartbeat. About 99% of the calcium in our body is in our bones and our teeth. So how much calcium do we need? Again, this depends on our age and gender. Anyone up to the age of 50 needs around 1,000 milligrams, and you need around 1,200 milligrams if you're a woman over 50 or a man over 70. Another thing that people seem to be worried about, if you're not drinking cow's milk, how are you going to get loads of calcium? Well, you can actually get it from eating almonds. They're also really high in fiber. You can also get so many different plant-based milks, rice milk, oat milk, almond milk, soya milk, even though I'm avoiding it. If you are drinking it, you want to get the organic one. And my personal favorite, coconut milk. Now this one's quite hard to get in your diet, but vital that you get, especially after I was bed bound for 10 months and I couldn't get my vitamin D from the sun. Vitamin D is a vital micronutrient that helps you regulate the amount of calcium and phosphates in the body. This is needed to keep bones, teeth and muscles healthy. The lack of vitamin D can lead to bone deformities such as rickets in children and bone pain caused by a condition called osteomalacia in adults. So how much vitamin D do you need? You need between 1000 and 4000 micrograms per day. And after experiencing so many health problems due to low vitamin D levels, I strongly recommend people take a supplement in countries that have low sunshine or bad weather. Now mushrooms are a really tasty source for vitamin D, but not all mushrooms have it, so check on the packet. These ones are most likely grown in the dark, so they don't get to see the sun and absorb vitamin D. But as you can see, these ones are clearly labelled vitamin D, and they're basically left out so they can get a suntan, so always eat the skin. Now I never used to be a big lover of mushrooms, but I've started to really love these ones and getting a good taste for them. Now going back to plant-based milks, now you already know that these are a really good source of calcium, but they're also fortified with vitamin D. But again, it's always good to check the packets and you can see on the back here, these are 1.1 micrograms. But checking on this one, it's a different brand, but as you can see there, it is 0.75 micrograms. So the Oatly brand seemed to win, but if you check this one, you'll see there's no fortified vitamin D in there at all. 
so always check the labels before purchasing. I also noticed that when Lidl released their Just Free brands, they also weren't fortified at the beginning, but now you can check the labels and see that they now contain a good level of vitamin D, B12 and calcium. And these are a pound cheaper than other brands, so well done Lidl. Now all of these products here may seem really expensive, but if you shop around you can get some really good bargains. This packet of flax seeds here comes in at a really amazing level of vitamin D and at 25.5 micrograms per 100 grams is amazing. It's also packed full of other nutrients I need in my diet. Now not many people talk about this one, it's iodine, sometimes pronounced iodine. Iodine is an essential mineral the body needs to make thyroid hormones. These hormones control the body's metabolism and many other important functions. The body also needs thyroid hormones for proper bone and brain development during pregnancy and infancy. So how much do we need? You need a minimum of 140 to 150 micrograms per day. Now another one that not many people talk about is iodine. Now you can get this in uh, dairy, eggs uh, and seafood, but you can also get it in seaweed. Potato skins are also a great source of iodine, so bake potatoes all the way. But I've taught you how to grow these at home along with sweet potatoes, so the link is on the screen now. Now sweet potatoes are packed full of nutrients, so definitely get these in your diet. They are so sweet and tasty, you can have these as a dessert or savoury. Strawberries are also really good for iodine, and I've taught you how to grow these, so the link's on the screen now. Now after having a heart attack, I decided to remove table salt from my diet, but sodium is still really important to have mainly because it plays a key role in normalizing your nerve and muscle functions. Many root vegetables contain sodium and a really good salt replacement. Spinach comes in at around 79 milligrams per cup. Swiss chard comes in at around 213 milligrams per cup. Beets are around 65 milligrams per cup. And carrots are around 70 milligrams per cup. But again, there's lots of carrots being wrapped in plastic these days. So help our fight to reduce single-use plastics and buy loose wherever you can. Or better yet, grow your own with the link here. Now a lot of these suggestions you can eat raw, but if you cook some, it can increase the antioxidants. Antioxidants collect all the nasties and they're called free radicals. This is from chemicals and pesticides. So you can cook things such as carrots, spinach, asparagus, cabbage. Also I know it's an acquired taste and not many people like them, but I'm gonna add celery because these are really good for the salt replacement as I'm not gonna have salt. Now I've got osteoarthritis, meaning I get lots of joint pain, so it's a really good idea to have an anti-inflammatory diet. So here's some foods that cause anti-inflammatory. So I'm not going to be using salt, but I will be using lots of herbs and spices, and turmeric yeah, is well, one of the best. This is really going to help uh, reduce any inflammations, but you do need to uh, eat it with either a fat or uh, black pepper, so I'm going to get that as well. And I'm also going to get chili flakes, that's going to help my endorphin levels and put me in a better mood. Now I've seen a lot of controversy online when it comes to tomatoes and arthritis, but I haven't had a problem. The only problem I have is all of this plastic yet again. There's no need for it. Always try and get the loose if you can, or if not, try and grow your own on this link. Blueberries are an incredible superfood and they're packed full of antioxidants, and many berries are really beneficial, especially raspberries. But again, if you're on a budget, don't be afraid of buying the frozen. Now cherries seem really expensive this year, but they do come with lots of vitamins and minerals and they're also really known for their antioxidant properties. Now garlic is amazing and really easy to grow, the link is on the screen now. They're packed full of antioxidants and can lower cholesterol. And one that I've just started eating quite a lot of is ginger. Again, this is packed full of antioxidants. It can help prevent arthritis pain and inflammation. It can also reduce the risk of diabetes and cancer. It's also really good for digestion. And the last little tip are a few things I'm going to avoid. So I'm also avoiding any foods that are in tins, especially acidic foods like uh, tomatoes. There's actually a plastic lining on the inside of tins that can leach, and this is made out of bisphenol A and other sort of dangerous uh, toxins. So I'm, I'm going to avoid tin food at all costs. I'm also going to avoid white flour, mostly bread, because it's been stripped of fibre and makes you feel sluggish by lowering your metabolism. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed today's video and it's helped you understand a lot more about the foods that I've been helping you grow. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and find out what's been going on. This is a six week challenge. So if you want to join me and let me know in the comments below, six weeks of eating a whole food plant-based diet. Wish me luck. I'll see you again soon. Take care. If you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases, click the subscribe button here. Here are some links to some of my other videos. And if you tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group where thousands of people are sharing photos and ideas daily. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.